So, in the last lecture, we uh, basically looked at uh, Turing patterns and uh, we looked at how uh, diffusion can actually give rise to uh, spatial instability, spatial patterns being formed provided the diffusion coefficients uh, satisfy a certain uh, relationship, okay. And uh, the reaction kinetics have uh, some property of an activator species and an inhibitor species. So, that was just to uh, give you an idea about how the general theory of uh, the stability that we are doing can be actually applied to a wide variety of systems, okay. So, now today we will come back to uh, fluid mechanics and uh, we are going to look at uh, this problem of uh, Marangoni instability. So, what I am going to do is first talk a little bit about Marangoni instability, then we will talk about uh, the formulation of the boundary condition and then uh, we will come and actually solve the problem of Marangoni instability, okay. So, uh, do this uh, thing in two or three different uh, ways, so you can get a overall picture, okay. So, this Marangoni instability, the physical system is the same as what we have seen earlier in the context of the Rayleigh Bernard problem. Now, just uh, to refresh, the Rayleigh Bernard problem was one where you had a liquid, and what you are doing is you are heating this. So, this is at a higher temperature T high, okay. And let us say for the sake of argument that this interface, this is this is a solid wall. Okay, that is a solid wall and here it is a, um, let us say this is gas. So, you have a liquid layer resting on a solid wall exposed to an atmosphere of gas. So, there is a small difference in the sense last time when we did the Rayleigh Binar problem, both the walls were uh, solid or both the walls were free, okay. But now all I am saying is this lower fellow is solid, upper fellow is free. So, you have a gas liquid interface here interface and uh, let us say the ambient temperature is constant at some value T ambient. So, the first thing which comes to mind is when I am going to be heating this, there is going to be a temperature gradient which is established, okay. And beyond a certain Rayleigh number, you will uh, which we derived uh, last time some 650 for a particular boundary condition, so 1700 for some other boundary condition, you will see the onset of convection, okay. So, if, so as the lower plate temperature increases, we see convection if the Rayleigh number is greater than a critical Rayleigh number and this is provided buoyancy is the one which is actually driving the convection, okay. This is when buoyancy drives the convection. We, you remember in the gravitational term, you had rho g and rho we said was varying linearly with temperature and we included that. And uh, the first uh, experiments actually done by Bernard, they were actually with a very, very thin film, 
okay, of liquid. So, the liquid film was very thin which means the Rayleigh number has this film thickness remember it has the film thickness which is d and it is raised to the power cube raised to the power 3 okay. So, Rayleigh number is proportional to d cube where d is the film thickness my point is even when Rayleigh number is of the order of 1 that is much lower than the critical numbers that we have seen okay much lower than the critical Rayleigh number convection has been observed. In fact, uh, uh, Bernard who first observed these kind of, uh, patterns, he uh, did not do it quantitatively. So, we actually do not have any estimate of the uh, Rayleigh number, but the idea was that the film is very thin. So, the film is very thin, we are suspecting that the Rayleigh number is much smaller. Okay. So, one can come up, come to two conclusions. One is that the theory that we did was wrong in the sense we are predicting Rayleigh number has to be greater than 1700 for the convection. Okay. So, clearly experiments are showing that uh, you have convection even when Rayleigh number is 1. So, that means something is crazy. Okay. That means the theory is wrong and we have to go back and uh, relook at it. Maybe go back and uh, make some uh, more realistic model. Okay. Or the other conclusion is that the convection, uh, convection is actually not being driven by buoyancy, but by some other mechanism. Yeah. When if the uh, film is extremely thin, then and we are having uh, you are heating it, then uh, the interface will deform if convection sets in. And if it's thin, then that will have uh, it'll, it'll, it'll play a it will play a role in determining everything. Yes. So we we haven't taken that into consideration. We did not take that into consideration in the uh, Rayleigh Bernard experiment. Yes. So, if you remember the Rayleigh Bernard experiment, uh, well, one analysis was with solid walls. Okay. So, in that case, you do not worry. So, the question is um, I mentioned that the uh, resolution of this conflict between the theoretical prediction and the experimental observation uh, is there in the sense the theoretical prediction predicts 1700 or more. Okay. And experimentally, of course, 1700 is for two rigid walls. And uh, what you can do is actually uh, do a prediction when you have um, one solid wall and one free surface here, and you can calculate the critical Rayleigh number and also be still high. So, the question was maybe the assumption of the interface being flat is the problem. Okay. So, if you allow the interface to deform, then maybe the critical Rayleigh number would be much lower. Okay. So, that is also a possibility. So, that is one way by which you actually go about. So, is it possible that by allowing the interface to deform, the critical Rayleigh number will be lower? That is the question. Okay. So, we had assumed that the interface was flat and got a high Rayleigh number critical. What if the interface is allowed to deform? So, maybe that can uh, result in a much lower Rayleigh number. Is that the point? Yeah. Maybe this will result in a much lower RA critical. Okay. So, Ok, 
Okay. The answer to this question is one has to actually do the calculation to find what the critical Rayleigh number is, right? But it is going to be still higher. It is going to be much higher on the order of thousands if you actually do the calculation. But the fact that there is the uh, another mechanism other than the density gradient comes because what people want to uh, even when you have experiments being done in uh, outer space on a space shuttle where the effect of gravity is not there okay people observe natural uh, i've not used uh, natural convection they use uh, observe convection that is even in the absence of gravity even in the absence of uh, this gravitational field which is what is actually giving rise to the uh, convection in the rayleigh binet problem you can actually see um, convection okay which means that there is another mechanism which is actually causing the convection so for example how do you do these experiments one is you can go to outer space and do these experiments and people have done that just to negate the effect of gravity they say look gravity is causing this problem so i want to grow crystals uh, semiconductor crystals let's say in outer space i do this over there and i don't have uh, you know any imperfection i have very good uh, quality crystals or you can do these experiments by just having a free fall you just uh, drop your experimental setup for 30000 feet uh, high in the atmosphere the thing the, the effect of gravity is neglected and then what you see is uh, you do your experiment so you have, of course you have a very very short window for doing the experiment by the time it actually falls so people have done this the fact is that even in the absence of gravity to explain why that there is another mechanism for causing this convection you actually do see convection okay and that is convection occurs in the absence of gravity and it will also occur if the geometry is such that the interface is below that is you have a solid wall on top and you have the liquid film at the bottom i mean uh, liquid at the bottom exposed to uh, another uh, fluid okay even in that case you do see convection patterns so these convection patterns are basically present uh, even when the gravitational field is in the opposite direction okay to the temperature gradient so that means the gravitational field in our buoyancy term is not the one which is causing the convection so point is even when gravity uh, is in the opposite direction i mean i think that's uh, possibly the wrong thing to write so let me put it this way even when the solid wall is on top and hot and the interface is below this means this is my solid wall and that's my liquid and this is my gas liquid interface okay and that's my gas liquid interface we can see convection so you have actually hot liquid at the top or uh, hot surface at the top and cooler surface at the bottom okay and that's normally a stable configuration right so that is we have hot wall and let us say a cold interface so here again we see convection so basically these are indications that there is something else which is actually causing the convection to occur okay and uh, so the idea is what is this thing that is causing the uh, convection to occur and that is that the marangoni instability is basically being is the other mechanism 
and is this particular convection is actually being driven by surface tension gradients okay so what is causing this it is surface tension gradients what i want to emphasize here is that this atmosphere here is at a uniform temperature t ambient that does not mean that the interface here is at t ambient there is going to be some kind of heat loss so temp i am not fixing the temperature of the interface okay the temperature of the interface is something which i have to find out okay and it is going to be given by a boundary condition like your newton's uh, law of cooling which says that minus k dt dy equals h times t minus t ambient this is at the gas liquid interface okay at the gas liquid interface and this is the typical kind of boundary condition you normally use right the convect the, the conductive flux here must be equal to the convective flux the point i am trying to make here is at the interface which is uh, you can decide what it is y equal to d let us say i am not fixing the temperature i am just saying that t ambient is constant this is infinite amount of uh, atmosphere available so that guy doesn't change so everywhere t ambient is constant but t can change okay so if temperature can vary at y equal to d in this direction then what can happen is the surface tension can be uh, is usually dependent on temperature okay so now let us see how what is going to happen because of uh, that. So, supposing we in the earlier problem of natural convection we in, uh, included the effect of density as a function of temperature. Now, we are going to include the surface tension as a function of temperature okay and now we are going to see whether that can actually give rise to uh, convection. So, I come back to this uh, figure. this is T high that is T ambient ok. Now, supposing you give a small perturbation there is a disturbance which is actually let us say you know you have this kind of a configuration and you give a disturbance what is going to happen is the liquid here which is hot ok let us say is getting pulled up I am not going to say that is being induced by uh, buoyancy but let us say there has been a disturbance which has actually caused the hot liquid at the bottom to rise up. Now at this point so this guy is at a high temperature so this is at a high temperature the interface remember is at a low temperature. So, at a particular instant of time this guy is at a low temperature and there is a hot packet of liquid which has momentarily come up because of a disturbance. The question we are asking is how is this disturbance going to propagate? If this guy is at a low temperature and let us say uh, the surface tension the surface tension decreases with an increase in temperature and that is the usual uh, behavior ok. For any liquid the surface tension is a function of temperature and uh, let us say decreases with an increase in temperature which is a normal behavior. So, the surface tension here is going to be temperature is low therefore, the surface tension here is going to be high. So, gamma is high here and this hot packet of liquid has come up here so gamma is low 
at the interface, the force is higher compared to here and therefore, there is a tendency for this liquid to be dragged along the interface because here the surface tension is less, here the surface tension is high, this guy is going to be dragged. Similarly here, I mean the hot packet has come up, right, temporarily the temperature has gone up here because let us say one liquid has come up, uh, one uh, small packet of liquid has come here, this guy is also low and so this guy will have tendency to come to this side. So basically what I am saying is the liquid ha will have a tendency to go towards the colder temperature because the surface tension there is high, the force there is high. Now when that happens, because of the equation of continuity, because of conservation of mass, this guy has to come down, okay. When one packet has gone up, this packet has to come down, so this guy will come down and this guy also has to come down eventually to fill up this space here. So this liquid will move, this liquid will move and you have this kind of a convection pattern. The point I am trying to make here is that I am not talking in terms of a density induced convection, I am talking in terms of a surface tension induced convection, okay. So the, if the surface tension is not a function of temperature, then this driving force is not going to be there, this guy is not going to pull, okay. So in order, so that uh, therefore what it means is I need to include the effect of surface tension as a function of temperature in my model and it is going to occur in the boundary condition, okay. And then I we should be able to see convection. So this is basically what Marangoni convection is all about, okay. So Marangoni, so here surface tension decreases with the increase in uh, temperature. If we have a hot packet of fluid rising due to a disturbance okay then this is dragged on both sides by the cold fluid which has a higher surface tension. Okay. And uh, by continuity, which is basically conservation of mass, hmm, the cold fluid. comes down and we see a convection. Remember if it had been the other way, if the surface tension had actually increased the temperature, then you would not have seen this. If the surface tension had increased the temperature, this guy would actually be lower surface tension, uh, tension. this guy would be, uh, sorry this guy would have been higher surface tension and the liquid would have been pulled from here and then it would have stabilized the flow, okay. So basically what we want to do now is uh, talk in terms of the boundary condition which is going to be applicable here and remember till now we only, uh, only talked about the normal stress boundary condition and Basically here what is going to happen is the boundary condition uh, that we are interested in is the tangential stress boundary condition, okay. So we need to basically uh, find out how to include this boundary condition and uh, boundary condition has to take into account the gradients in the surface tension which is actually being caused by the gradients in the temperature. Now the surface tension of course is also going to be dependent upon the concentration. So for example, you know that if you add a surfactant, the surface tension is going to go down, okay. So similar to this temperature gradient, if you also had a concentration gradient and uh, 
if the concentration increases of the surfactant increases, you will have a decrease of the surface tension. Okay? So, the same kind of a behavior you can expect to see. So, basically when you can, uh, you can actually add surfactants and you can uh, you know, have concentration variations inducing convection. Okay? So, that is something which uh, people have also done. So, in addition to temperature gradients, you can also have concentration gradients which can actually cause Marangoni instability. So, it is not just uh, Marangoni instability is a very general thing. It talks about surface tension variations which can be either due to temperature or concentration or anything which can actually cause convection. Okay? So, uh, if the motion is induced by surface tension gradients we have Marangoni convection okay So, what I want to do now is this is just the background for why we have to worry about the surface tension gradient. Now, what I want to do is talk about the formulation of the boundary condition. At a general let us say liquid liquid interface. So, normally you are used to uh, dealing with uh, flat surfaces continuity of shear stress. Okay. So, let us look at uh, certain things. So, whenever you talk about uh, interfaces, hmm, one thing is we say that the interface is infinitesimally thin. So, it has got 0 thickness. That means, it has basically got no mass. Okay. So, what that means is at the interface, we always have a force balance. That is to say, the net forces we are acting on the system on the interface is going to be 0. Because, if it is not 0, that means there is going to be some kind of acceleration. If the mass is 0, the acceleration has to be infinite. Okay. So, basically what this means is, so since the interface has 0 thickness, okay, or negligible mass, negligible mass, negligible thickness, okay. the forces acting on an element on the interface has to be 0. Why? If it is non-zero, that means there is going to be an acceleration and which will be actually infinite because the mass is zero. Okay? So, this uh, okay. if not we would have let us say infinite acceleration at the, inter at the interface. So, of course, when you talk in terms of a liquid liquid interface, hmm, let us say this is liquid 1. 
and that is liquid 2. Okay. So, you have molecules all over the place and you also have molecules all over the place here and just to differentiate these molecules I am using two different symbols. The molecules which are in the bulk okay, far away from the interface they are going to be surrounded by molecules of the same liquid. This guy is going to be surrounded by molecules of the same liquid. So, whereas the guys at the interface at the bottom they are surrounded by molecules of liquid 2 and on the upper side they are going to be surrounded by molecules of liquid 1. So, what I am saying is the cause actual cause for the uh, forces that are acting on the interface is actually attributed to molecular interactions at the interface whereas, here it is completely symmetric and uniform. So, this guy has an atmosphere which is only of this kind of molecule, this guy has molecules of liquid 2 uh, partially and liquid 1. Okay. So, there is a difference in the environment which the molecules at the interface is going to see and because of which because of this intermolecular forces you actually have this surface tension. So, that is actually the and if you really want to uh, be able to predict what the surface tension is you have to possibly come go to a molecular level and come up with some kind of a theory for the um, description of the surface tension. Okay. So, point is at the interface we have the molecules uh, having an environment of both molecules okay whereas in the bulk far from the interface Um, molecules are surrounded by the same species. Understand what I am saying? This guy will always have molecules of liquid 2, this guy always has molecules of liquid 1. So, does not really uh, experience any net force, whereas this guy partially liquid 1, partially liquid 2 there is a net force on the interface. So, if you really want to understand what is going on you need to go to the molecular theory and do this. Okay. So, just like uh, we have uh, constitutive relationships for the uh, shear stress in terms of velocity gradient, people have basically come up with uh, some kind of a constitutive relationship and talk in terms of a net force like a surface tension which is acting on the interface. Now, how valid, so how valid is this uh, approach of just saying that look there is a net force sigma which we have to uh, use uh, which is acting on the interface, the validity will come by uh, using it in developing our theory, looking at predictions of the uh, flow behavior and seeing if it is consistent with experiments. Okay. So, if it is consistent that means this theory is something which you are happy with and you can use it for practical purposes. If it is not uh, consistent then you go back and re redefine your theory and come up with uh, introducing new properties for example. So, for example, there are many people who sit down and uh, talk in terms of you uh, know uh, viscosity which is a bulk property. So, there are people who talk in terms of interfacial viscosity that is there is going to be a viscosity at the interface which is actually different from the viscosity of the bulk. Okay. So, depending upon the level of detail you want to get into you will uh, start working and including these effects. Right now what we are going to do as far as our approach is concerned is we will just say that there is a force which is acting on the interface and um, this thermodynamically we want to have a consistent picture. So, thermodynamically we have um, the argument that surface tension is basically looked upon as the work done per unit area. So, if you have an interface with a particular area, you increase the area of the element, there is more energy which is stored. So, the thermodynamic perspective is on an energy per unit area basis, but since we are more interested in the dynamics of the system, we want to use a force perspective. So, we talk in terms of force per unit area. 
okay. So basically what I am saying is the uh, thermodynamic perspective perspective is um, the energy per unit area that is what surface tension is okay. So, if you increase the area of an interface you try to have a spherical drop and you try to change the shape of the drop. The amount of energy because the sphere has the minimum area you are going to necessarily have a larger area okay. So, you actually have to do work in order to change the shape of the drop. So, that is basically your thermodynamic perspective hmm. whereas from a mechanical perspective we talk in terms of force per unit length okay what i want to do is uh, basically write down what I just said earlier that is the net forces after acting on the interface should be 0, okay. So, now let us look at an interface which is boy, this is going to be tricky. So, let, this is my curved interface and that is my normal and that is kind of tangential, that is tangential. Okay. So, this is my normal to the interface and that is the direction of the tangent. So, this is the view from this side. So, if I want to look at the thing from the top, I would have uh, some kind of an interface like this and I am going to take an area element. So, I am talking about interface. So, there is going to be an area element d a. Okay. So, this is my area element d a and the outward normal is now outside the bo uh, board. So, I can show that, but the tangents are going to be in this direction. That is my tangent. So, what I am going to do now is look at let us say capital T here and T tilde. Earlier, I had used the T 1 and T 2, but now I am following Gary Leal in his convention. So, I am just going to use whatever he has done. Okay. So, T is the total stress tensor in the upper liquid and T tilde is the total stress tensor in the lower liquid. Okay. So, basically what this means is T is minus P i plus tau, the pressure plus the shear stress coming because of the motion. Okay. T tilde is minus P tilde plus tau. So, on this interface, I like to write down all the forces that are acting on the system. Right. So, on this interface where the direction of the normal is given by n. Okay, what exact? What is the uh, force balance? The force exerted by the upper liquid, force exerted by the upper liquid is T dot n. The total force. That is, all the three components are there. I mean, if I have an interface the direction of the normal is n, what we said is T dot n tells you what the total force component is, right. This is a stress tensor and that is your uh, outward normal which is a vector. So, this is going to give you a vector. So, all the, the entire force component is there. Now, force exerted. So, this is as you are approaching the liquid from the top, the interface from the top. Similarly, force exerted by the lower liquid 
is going to be given by t tilde dotted n tilde, but remember n tilde is minus of n, okay. Remember n tilde equals minus n and therefore this is minus t tilde dotted with n. So, this is due to the bulk stresses which are acting on the top and the bottom. In addition to that, if I look upon the surface tension force as a force per unit length, along the perimeter, along the perimeter of this area element, I have a surface tension force, okay. And uh, that is going to be acting along the length, along the tangential directions. So, the surface tension force. is given by gamma T dl. Okay. And this is along the perimeter, whereas this is along the area element dA. So, these guys, this is along d a, this is along d a and now I want the net forces to be balanced, okay. So, I have integral, I am going to put a double integral for my area t minus t tilde dotted n d a plus integral over the perimeter must be equal to 0. So, basically this tells you what the net forces are which are acting on the system. I told you I want these forces to actually balance out and give me 0, okay. I have a problem in the sense that this guy is an area integral and that guy is a line integral. So, now if you go back to your Reynolds transport theorem, we have the same situation, we had a surface integral, we had a volume integral, we converted the surface integral to a volume integral by using some divergence theorem, okay. So, what we are, we are going to do now is, because I like to get a boundary condition, a boundary condition which is going to be valid for every area element d a, right. So, what I am going to do now is convert this guy into an area element and then I am going to say that this has to be valid for any d a and so, every d a it should vanish that is the argument, okay. So, now for this you need to go, go to calculus. So, I am not going to do the mathematics, I am just going to tell you what the formula is. So, I am going to convert the line integral to an area integral, okay. And uh, that means, over the double integral over That's fine. N dot del or del dot n, maybe I will write this as del dot n. Yeah. So, this is of course, those of you who are interested, you should go and uh, make sure that you simplify the left hand side, you simplify the right hand side and show that they are equal, okay. Otherwise, uh, you just have to accept whatever I have said. Here, this is gradient of S or the gradient along the surface, okay. Now, the gradient along the surface, this particular gradient is, see the gradient is a vector toroidal operator, right. You take the grad of something. 
I want the gradient along the surface. So, what I have to do is I have to take the complete gradient and subtract the gradient along the normal. So, that is going to give me the gradient along the surface. So, the gradient of S is written as minus gradient of n times n dot del. This is the total gradient this is the normal component of the gradient n dot del tells you what the normal component is multiplied by n tells you what the uh, well this just tells you the magnitude of the projection with n tells you the actual uh, component and so I subtract that from the total gradient I get my surface gradient ok. So, basically the vectorial gradient I am resolving into two components which is the normal direction and the tangential direction and uh, the point that is important here is that this guy the line integral actually has two components one which is along the tangential direction and one which is along the normal direction ok. So, clearly what this means is the normal stress balance will have this term contributing, the tangential stress balance will have this term contributing ok. So, what I am going to do now is substitute this back inside here and I am going to get the double integral over the area as So, I want this to be true for any area element no matter, matter what which one I choose how small I choose which means this can vanish the integral can be 0 only if at every point it is 0 you understand this is true for all area elements d a therefore, T minus T tilde dotted N plus gradient on the surface of gamma minus gamma N times del dot N equals 0. And remember this is a vectorial equation ok. This is a vectorial equation because this is a gradient along the surface this has got two vectorial components this is a scalar but this is a vector and t dot n is also a vector. So, basically I got a force balance for every element now and all I have done is written the force balance converted line integral to area integral and uh, made some arguments and I got this. But when I it when it comes to actually solving a problem I need to resolve this in the normal direction and in the tangential direction and get my boundary condition ok. So, what we, in order to find so this is the force acting on this area element in order to find the normal component I will dot this with n to find the tangential component I will dot this with t and I get my relationship that I want ok. So, to get the normal component balance what do I do t minus t tilde dotted with n I think I did n dot in the earlier lecture. So, I will just stick to that gradient of gamma is not going to contribute grad s is not going to contribute because that is in the tangential direction this is not I am doing the dot product with the n ok. So, when I look at this uh, this thing For example, look here if I do n dot grad s I will get n dot n 
uh, sorry n dot del minus n dot n n dot del. So, n dot del will cancel. So, n dot gradus is 0 ok. So, that that goes off and what I have n dot n which is again unit normal is 1. So, I have minus gamma del dot n equals 0 that is my normal uh, stress boundary condition and this remember is your curvature term del dot n and gamma is your surface tension ok. If you want to actually get the uh, tangential stress boundary condition what should you do? Take the dot product with t and you get t dotted dotted with n plus gradient of gamma along the surface dotted with t equals 0. So, what we will do is we will stop right now, we will continue from here in the next class. <laughs>